So it's a little bit of a weird one today, I must admit, location-wise at least. Um, let me start by saying this. We're in Lancaster, we're still in the Lancaster district, which means obviously we're within the county of Lancashire. Now with that being said, we're in the Yorkshire Dales National Park. What a treat. Now, I've always known that a very substantial um, section of the Yorkshire Dales National Park is within the county of Cumbria, but I only found out fairly recently that there's a really small little section that jits up, it spikes up into the national park that is part of Lancashire. I'll have to put it up on the screen on a map or something here because it can get a little bit confusing. And if you can't tell, I am mad into my county and district boundaries and maps and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, for me, I found this really interesting. And to top it off, we've got the highest point of Lancashire in this little section in little old Lancaster, which is amazing. That's class. Um, so I've never been up here and high hopes, low expectations, <laughs> as usual when I'm out with the camera. But this is amazing because the views are to die for. It's mental. It's like all the views that I usually show you. So all the big names. We've got the Lake District Park back here behind my massive bed. Snow topped, fells. It is stunning, absolutely glorious. Then we've got huge, like sweeping vistas back over Morecambe Bay, um, down into the Loon Valley. And then when we get up to this next peak called Grey Gareth, we're going to get beautiful views um, into the Yorkshire Dales National Park and um, into some of the Yorkshire peaks as well, which is just madness. What a spot for it. <laughs> so I'm heading up for the sunset, but um, I don't really know what's going to happen. It started clouding over, but of course, we're out here living the dream. Let's crack on. <laughs> It's one of them where you just, you, as you start hiking up the fell, the views just get better and better with each step. So the bag's on the deck, I'm getting ready to take the first photograph already, um, and it's gonna be nice. Now, before we get into this, I wanted to share my extreme gratitude for the wonderful response that I've had so far to my brand new ebook. It's a locational guide on the wonderful Lake District National Park, which is off in the background, of course. And yeah, the response has been fantastic, and it's up for sale now on my website. A hell of a lot of work has gone into this ebook, <laughs> I must admit, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm quite glad that it's done and dusted and up for sale. Um, it's packed with value, it's got 48 stunning locations in that just heavenly national park. And although it was difficult and it took a long time, it was quite easy for me, in a sense, to know what to put into the book because I'm a photographer at the end of the day, and I just thought if I was to go to the Brecon Beacons or something, what would I want? You know, what would I want out of an ebook? Um, so if anyone doesn't know what an ebook is, it's just an electronic book. You can download this on your phone, or your iPad, tablet, even a computer, and it's kind of interactive as well. So throughout, you know, the whole book and each location, there's a link to where to park your car. There's links to topography maps. There's route guidance. There's a photograph from each location. My own photographs, of course. A little bit of an overview of each location. Even if there's toilets where you park your car, I think as well. Um, just things that like you just want to know you know we just want to know these things um so yeah packed with value and just nice and simplified and easy to use and any purchases of that ebook are hugely appreciated and at the end of the day to be honest you know it, it's things like the purchases like that that keep me out here living my dreams so thank you all so much um i really appreciate it i'll leave a link to it in the video description below you're gonna love it. The response has been fantastic. And thanks again, most of all, to everyone that's purchased one so far. Um, it's shoes that, you know, spur me on with these sorts of things. Thank you so much, it means the world. Right, let's get this handheld shot in the can. <laughs> desolate landscapes that has been the word for me over the past five or six months just nothing like love it well nothing except from the beautiful peaks and the gorgeously textured sky <laughs> who am i giving it the nothing no um so first things first main focal point um probably unsurprisingly is that beautiful snowy fell off in the background absolutely wonderful and it was one of them i was just coming up the hill this way looked over the left shoulder and i could see and these sort of rocks down here 
worked really well with the text that, that we're getting from the snow and the sky as well. The sky is absolutely beautiful. Um, so it's doing the work for me really. All I've got to do is snap the shot. <laughs> so the 16 to 35 millimeter lens is on and I'm shooting at 16 mil. So it's fairly wide. Um, I'm shooting at F8 ISO 100 and then as always I'm just going to focus around about one third of the way in as long as I'm focused on them rocks down there. Then I'll just adjust my shutter speed. I'll go under a little bit just because I know my camera. I don't want to ex overexpose that sky. I've got the, the horizon line or the top of them peaks on the top third and that'll do it for me. And I'll probably, ah oh, the light's really nice in the sky actually. Um, I love it when the light's really variable as you see in the image there you'll probably see there's all different varieties of light in within the sky and, and tones you know there's like as i'm looking at it now there's a nice bright patch up there uh, there's some darker grayer clouds and stuff and i love that so much um so that's a nice first one to start off the day what a treat um let's crack on because i want to get a little bit further up towards gray Gareth, get some of these beautiful sweeping vistas Ah, so we can't be in the Lake District National Park at the minute, or I can't, <laughs> but I can photograph it from afar with the long lens. What a treat, so zoom on some of them fields that are going to be in the foreground. And yeah, just them snow-capped fells, oh, absolutely unreal, they're looking quite ominous. There's a nice blanket of cloud on the top of them as well, which is just adding um, to the effect. And we've got this nice dry stone wall at the bottom here, cutting from left to right. And a few windmills as well, which I quite like. ISO 320 f8 and 1 400th of a second perfect histogram yeah just not the ISO up a little bit just because I um I was on the long lens I wanted a bit of a quicker shutter speed you know absolute beauty oh, so I've just been spending a little bit of time let me get over to these beasts now um Circling around these, they're called the Three Men of Gragorith. Um, do you know what's cool? Nobody really knows why they're here. They're clearly like three cairns or something like that, but I'm sure you'll agree. These are going to be mega for the photography. What a foreground subject. So the bag's down on the deck, and um, this is something I always say to people, especially on my one-to-ones and that sort of thing. Don't be so quick to get your, your camera out, and certainly not your tripod, you know. Put your bag down, spend a little bit of time around the subject, you know. It's clear, uh, it's clear to me, hopefully clear to you as well. I'm going to want these in the photograph somewhere. It's just a case of how I can make them fit in with the background. In this certain situation, we are spoiled for choice. We have got sweeping vistas across Morecambe Bay and down south into Lancashire a little bit more. Some of the Howgill Fells over there, I think. Um, obviously the Lake District right off in the background as well. It's amazing. So really it's just a case of how and where are we going to position these beasts in the frame. And yeah, don't be so quick to always just look through your viewfinder. You know, sometimes I can find um, it to be quite limiting. I also find as well when you haven't got any of your gear in hand, it's a nice way to just wander around and actually connect with the landscape that you're in, you know. Um, and just kind of leaving the technicalities aside a little bit, you know. So I'm going to do just that, see how we're going to get these framed up. What a treat. Ooh, these rocks are dodgy. <laughs> wow. Right, sorted. So I've been having a good scout around for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. Probably about 10 minutes, I'm over-exaggerating there. A bit of hyperbole, never do any harm. Um, no, but it's... um. I've, all, I've had all three lens on, lenses on by the time I picked my camera up and I finally decided to go with the wide angle lens which is the one that I didn't think I was going to use out of all three mostly because what the wide angle can can do depending on where you physically put yourself or your camera um, it can make things seem a lot smaller which is really what I didn't want to do you can see here um, especially from this angle where I am and where you are they're, they're quite powerful <laughs> I like to think, you know, they're quite a strong subject. They protrude over the horizon. They're kind of dominating us, you know, and that's kind of the um, perspective that I'm going for with the camera. So I'm finding the wide angle lens is fine as long as I stay low down and still allow them. You remember, this is my job as the photographer. I'm in control of that perspective. I'm still allowing them to have that dominance, uh, to retain that dominance, all right? So I am shooting at 11 mil. 
And uh, also what the wide angle lenses allow me to do, obviously, is capture so much more within the scene. And just over in the background there is actually that mountain, the snow-capped peak that I photographed. I'm going to put the name of it up in here on the screen because that's two photographs of it now without me telling you what it's called. It's actually in Cumbria. Um, but yeah, it's that same peak and I like that he's in the frame. So no vibration reduction on this lens, but still don't need the tripod. I'm just going to focus on the first little man here, the first man of Gragorath. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no vibration reduction. So I need to be a little bit careful. I think I'm going to be fine though. F8, um, 1 160th, that'll be fine. I'll bring my ISO down. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that'll be fine. So 1 60th of a second, F8 and ISO 100. And like I say, it's all about making sure we give these subjects the dominance that they deserve really make sure that they're the most powerful subject within the frame but like i said i've included that mountain in the background just to give the image a little bit of something somewhere for the eye to go so I'll grab that now mega perfect histogram and i've also i'm kind of using the rule of thirds but in the opposite way to what i usually would so um, there's quite a lot of the sky in the frame you know the upper two thirds of the whole frame is the sky beautifully textured and I feel, again, it's just adding to that dominance. I keep saying that. The dominance of these figures here in the foreground as they, you know, jit up into the sky. And we've got a real big sky. It just suits the scene. Yeah, so that's mint. I love that peak off in the background. Raging, I don't know what it's called. I'm going to find it now. Crag Hill. It's called Crag Hill. Probably already put it up on the screen, but at least I know now. The farmer did tell me that before, actually. He said that hill up there is called Crag Hill and it's in Cumbria. Useless. Right. Let's get up to Gragorath and finish off the evening up there. Hopefully with some nice colour in the sky, another hour till sunset. It's nice as well, there's not much wind. There's no human beings up here, which is always a treat. <laughs> Quality, let's get packed up. Ooh. Yes, we're up the peak of Gragorath. So that makes me, except from the aircraft, currently the highest person in Lancashire. What time are we on? Quarter to six, still another 20, 25 minutes till the sunset. Uh, 627 meters, that is class. So I really want to get a photograph here. Um, if anything, just because this is the highest point of Lancaster. And uh, of course, I'm going to have my exhibition in uh, Lancaster Museum at some stage, whenever things return back to normal um, and I think it'll just be really cool to have you know the highest point of Lancaster a photograph of it we've got this incredible vista of Ingleborough in the background um, covered in cloud you know absolutely beautiful vistas whoa I can't get over it back over Morecambe Bay I'm so lucky to live where I do what a privilege not a head in sight as well why are people not up here man mind you it is a Monday night oh man what a treat. So yes, I want to get a shot probably of the trig point and maybe of Ingleborough in the background and the dry stone wall as well you can see in the background is um, one of the highest in England, if not the highest, I think, which is pretty cool. So I might go and check that out as well. Amazing. I might even treat myself to my tripod. <laughs> so this is quite childish, I have to say, but um, I'm shooting this shutter speed uh, wise at one tenth of a second. Now my absolute limit on my 16 to 35 mil lens um, for handheld, even with VR on, is one thirteenth of a second. So I'm just about justifying using the tripod, you know. I don't have to go up to one uh, ISO 125, so it was worth bringing it up. Um, that's a joke, by the way, to any beginners watching. I'm just being sarcastic. The tripod's not really necessary here. I could just bump the ISO up a little bit, but it's pretty dark as well. Um, but yeah, F8 ISO 100. Uh, I think this is going to be my last shot, to be honest. The light's not incredible. It's quite flat. Um, but this is a nice sort of classic vista. And like I said, I wanted to get this photograph just because of the, uh, just because of where I am and about my exhibition and things like that. So it's a bit of a classic. We've got the trig point on the right-hand side of the frame of Gragorath. Then right off in the background on the left, like I said, we have got Ingleborough. It's looking glorious, to be fair. Even though we haven't got the light, the clouds are incredible. It's been the story of the day, really, hasn't it? These beautiful... Uh, beautifully textured clouds and all these 
these tones of grey. I always go on about that. I feel like it's weird talking about the colour grey, but honestly, look at it. It's so moody. And, um, you know, we're going to have that... The high clouds are really dark. We're, we're going to have that beautiful frame of the dark clouds at the top of the image. I absolutely love that. And, um, yeah, F8 ISO 100, if I didn't say already, and I've just focused on the trig point. Trig point. So, um mega stuff i'll leave you with this photograph i really hope you like it and i'll just mention once again uh, if you'd like to purchase my ebook uh, my locational guide to the lake district national park i'll leave a link in the video description below and uh, once again thanks so much to anybody that decides to purchase you're really supporting me um in living my dream <laughs> really at the end of the day there's no two ways about it and it means a lot and you're gonna love it and most of all Thanks to anyone who's decided to purchase already. Your support means everything. Hope you like this photograph. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.